This is graphing frequency or duration using Google Sheets. Um, so I might do this for frequency, so meaning like the total count of a target behavior, whether it be hitting, non-compliance, physical aggression, tantrums, and the number of times that's happening per day or per week. Um, or I might do uh, duration of non-compliance or refusal behaviors. Um, if I have multiple episodes happening per day, I would want to graph that as a scatter plot. But if I'm doing like total duration of refusal or non-compliance for the day or average length um, per episode, that would give me one data point per day or per week. And so then I could represent that as a line graph. So in column A, like always, I'm going to start off with the date, and then I'm just going to pick non-compliance. Um, that one can be a little tricky to define because it doesn't always pass the dead man's test, so I would need an operational definition for this if I was tracking it. So for example, um, student initiates um, an activity other than the one directed by the adult within 30 seconds. Um, that might be a way that I define non-compliance. So I might have um, total episodes of non-compliance per day. Um, you can see right now, this is kind of long. So it's going over into the C column. So if I click on this and I go to format, go down to text wrapping and then wrap, um, and now it will all fit in the B column. All right, I'm going to move this over. I could also say total duration. So this would be your cumulative duration. So maybe I'm adding up the total number of minutes per day they're engaging this. If I wanted to know, or maybe I'm getting an average per day and representing that. Um, if I wanted to graph again per episode, so I wanted to say, okay, on October 1st, he... His first episode of non-compliance was 13 minutes, then he had a 30 minute one, um, then he had a 10 minute one. I would need to do that as a scatter plot. If I just wanna know the total, so if I'm gonna add 13, whatever I said, 13, 20, and then 10, and if I'm gonna add all those numbers or get an average, I can do that as a line graph because then I'm getting one data point per day. So a total duration of non-compliance. You think I would know how to spell this because I type it a lot. Okay, and again, it doesn't fit in the box. You can always take the arrow and make this wider so now it fits. But if you don't like that and you like your rows to be similar sizes, again, you're going to go to format, ah, format, text wrapping, and then wrap. So I'm going to start with the date. Okay. I'm going to track down. I can click on these two to make sure that they're all weekdays. All right, so total episodes of non-compliance per day. So he had five, then four, then 10 on this day, and then two, that was a good day. And then I'm gonna look at my data sheet. Maybe I'm adding up the total number of minutes. Um, per day, um, so I'm going to say that it was 45, uh, 10, then um, 100, and then 5. All right, and I'm going to want these as two different graphs, so I can do that. I'm going to click on A, which will highlight the row, then go over to hold down shift on my keyboard, then click on B, and then it's insert chart. All right, so his total episodes of non-compliance per day, total episodes of non-compliance per day. All right. I'm already under customize. I'm under chart title if I wanted to change the, um, the y-axis or the vertical. I wanted to say this to say something different. Oh, little episodes. I want that to be plural. All right. 
You can also click here if you wanted to edit. I can actually click on it. Or I could be under the customize and then the chart and access titles over here. It works either way. Um, one thing I don't like is that Google Sheets <laughs> just does like a line. It doesn't give you the data points. So you can't see the actual dots, which um, I'm not a fan of. So I always go to its series. I could change the color if I'm so inclined. Maybe I'll make it purple because I like purple. Then I can go down to point size. Right now it's saying none. That's why it's just that zigzaggy line. And then I usually just say seven point just because that stands out. All right. If I wanted to, you can insert data labels, although be cautious with that because it can get visually overwhelming. I could put a trend line in. Um, there's only four data points, so a trend line is probably not mean necessarily meaningful for this graph, but I could. And then I usually change the color just so that it stands out a little bit more. If I don't want the trend line, I can remove it by unclicking. If I'm done editing this graph, X out of this, and I can move this over here so it's out of my way. All right, now maybe I want a second graph for total duration. Um, so again, I wouldn't put frequency and duration um, on the same graph just because frequency would be a count and duration is time. So those would need to be two separate graphs. So again, I'm going to click on A. It highlights the whole column. And then I'm going to click on Shift. I'm holding it down. I move my cursor over to C. I click on that. I do Insert Chart. total duration of non-compliance. I'm going to put in here per day because that wasn't in there. Um, and then the uh, vertical axis right here, the Y, I'm probably going to want to change that. Total duration. And then I'm just going to say in minutes so that we know that this is minutes as opposed to two seconds or something like that. So I have total duration in minutes. Um, I typically don't label the um, the horizontal axis down here because it's just date. So I don't feel like I need to add date, but you could if you wanted to. Again, it's not showing me the data points. So I'm gonna go down to series. I'm gonna add my points back in seven. I'm going to leave it blue sometimes when I have a target behavior, maybe that I'm re representing different ways or if I'm taking frequency data of multiple behaviors. Um, I like to change it so they're just different colors so that just visually they stand out. That just helps me. All right, so then that looks good. I'm going to move this down here so it's out of my way. Um, well, if I wanted to, just because this frequently comes up, I'm just going to show you how to get an average. So if I wanted to get an average for the first week of my data collection, or maybe this is my baseline, I'm, I put average over here, I said equals, it's already guessing. Sometimes it will guess the formula. Uh, um, so I'm going to click on this because it's giving me B, and then two is my first data point all the way to B5. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to tell me 5.25. So that's telling me that there is a little bit more than five episodes per day of non-compliance. Um, if I want to have this round down, I can decrease the decimal places by clicking on this. I could do that, add it back. Um, as I add more data in here, the average formula, at least not that I have found a way, it doesn't automatically update itself. So if I added another week's data, I would probably have to say from B2 to B10 because now there's another five data points. I would have to go in and click on this and then delete the five and just add 10, update the data. Um, and then for this, if I wanted to do an average again for minutes, so again, it guessed, so C2, because I'm in row C, I'm, I'm in column C, and then it starts row two all the way through 
row five. So I'm going to click on that. There's about 40 minutes per day, like my first week. If I wanted to do a sum, which means the total number of the behavior. So maybe I wanted to get a total for the quarter or for the week um, for my goal updates. I can say equals, oh, equals sum. And then I'm going to say I'm in column B. I'm starting with row two, row five. And see, it's going to highlight. It puts a box around um, what it's doing. So I know that I have the right range, tab 21. And then I believe if I click on this, little blue box pops up. I could drag this over. And then see, um, it, since I had a sum formula over here, it moved it over. And then since I dragged it over, I guessed that it would be the C column. Um, if I wanted to add a couple more data points, I can do insert row above. And then it moves this down. Insert row above. All right, so I'm going to move this down. All right, that's a Saturday, so I'm going to click on Friday. So here's, I mean, Monday. So Monday, Tuesday, I'm going to put in another couple data points. So I'm just going to say one, an amazing Monday, two. Here, I'm going to say, I'll just say 10, I'll say 10, and then 20. All right, and it should automatically update the graphs. My formulas might be in the way so I can clear these. I'm just going to regenerate it. Sometimes that happens where it doesn't auto populate the data. So I'm just going to do it. And then if I wanted to move it to a new chart, move to own sheet, and it's on that sheet, I can copy the chart. If I copy the chart, I could copy and paste it into maybe like a summary of data that I'm sharing at a meeting with a parent. Um, when I do copy and paste it into another document, um, a little kind of like arrow thing will show in the right hand corner. So anytime I update this data sheet, if I go into Google Sheets and maybe I have like a narrative summary of this graph that I'm sharing with family or outside provider, I can just click on that circle and will automatically update. And that is how you do a line graph for frequency or duration.